Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to go and start to give our plank some 3D shape. And we want to go and create some nail heads that sit on top of the, the actual wood planks themselves. All right, so this is basically our pattern right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, or something that I like to do, is I drop down a null node. These are kind of act like markers for me, at least when I use them like this. Now, uh, you'll notice that my null node is customized. All right, usually the null node uh, by default is a square or rectangle. And now to change this, you can hit the uh, C and X keys on the keyboard, or I'm sorry, it's the Z key. All right, and what you can do is you can uh, hold down Control and you drag, or I'm sorry, Alt, and you drag your node, your default node, over whatever shape that you want. And what'll happen is it'll uh, create that for you, okay? And it'll set that particular shape by default. Uh, and the same goes for color, okay? So C for the color panel, Z for the shape panel, and that is how we do that. So that's why my null node looks different than yours, most likely. Okay, so what I do is I give this a, a name. So I'm just going to call this the pattern. And usually I capitalize that so it's pattern, just so it stands out from the rest. Okay, so first things first, uh, which is relatively easy. I'm going to create another for each primitive so we can work on each plank individually. Uh, now you could do it up here, but I'm going to separate this out just to keep all these systems nice and clean and separated from each other. All right, so I'm going to wire this together like so. And now we can roll through each individual plank and start working on the rest of the detailing that we need to do for this particular pattern. OK, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, poly extrude. Or I'm going to go and find the poly extrude node down here, add it to the network like so. And let's just give it a little bit of uh, height there. All right, so I just selected the poly extrude node and changed the distance on this guy right here. Perfect. Now, when we do that inside of Houdini, it doesn't automatically add the bottom uh, or the back as it's called. So if you scroll down in the poly extrude parameters here, just hit output back and you get all the geometry. Okay, cool. So the next thing that I wanna do is I want to get the top most primitive up here, okay? And in the poly extrude context or with this particular node, it is going to call this the front. And so what we can do is we can actually create a group out of that. All right. So the poly extrude node will automatically generate groups when we hit these little check boxes for us. And so what I can do is I can rename it by default. It's called the extrude front. All right. And that's totally fine. I, I do that all the time. I'll use that, that default, especially when I'm, you know, moving relatively quickly through my networks and building up models and have deadlines and stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to name it just to make everything clear to us. Okay, so now with the poly extrude node selected, because this is the node creating that group, I can open up our group panel up here, and I could switch this over to primitives. And you can see now we have this top group. And if I hover my mouse over that name, you can see that it highlights that top primitive. This is great because now I can use that as placement for the nails. Okay, cool. So let's go and do that. And we'll just get that hooked up really, really uh, basic like uh, so I'm going to drop down a blast node because I really just want that primitive sitting on top of that plank okay so I want to blast away all the other geometry uh, there is also a delete node let's see if they still have it yep there's a delete node and you could do it there too but that's a little old school um, I use the blast node now it's a little bit quicker especially when you start using the Houdini engine uh, this node is like a bare bones delete whereas the delete node comes with a bunch of extra properties and parameters okay so uh, I'm going to hit this little drop down here and select the top group that we just made. Now you'll notice by default, the blast node is actually going to delete the one that we selected, but we can invert that selection by hitting this delete non-selected. Cool. So now we just get that particular piece. And what I'm looking for is to place or to create the pivot points where we're going to place our nail heads. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the points from this particular primitive as those pivot points or those placement points. So you can see if I turn on this little guy right here, all of our points in this piece of geometry um, are highlighted for us. You can also turn on the, the numbering for it as well. All right, and then there you go. Now you can see all the numbers. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that our nails sit inside of this. So a really cool thing we can do inside of Houdini is we can actually template previous geometry upstream or downstream or side or right stream, left or right stream, <laughs> um, by hitting this little template tag right here. 
that allows us to see, you know, what the geometry looked like at this stage in the network. Okay. And so what I'm going to do uh, with this top primitive here is I'm going to actually drop down. Let's just do it in a really basic way. All right. Just keep everything, you know, at a beginner level here. I'm just, I'm really creating these for people to kind of jump into Houdini really quickly. Okay. So I'm going to create that poly extrude node. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this inset. All right. To inset our primitive and not output the side. And what that does is it gives me these four points. All right. So now I have four points and this is where all of our, our nail heads are going to go. Okay. We actually have further control over this. So you can turn on the transform extruded front. Okay. And we can actually uh, scale it, you know, in the different directions. So we can say scale in the X or scale in the Y. All right. Which will bring it in and out. All right. So we have control over all this. So we could randomize all these values because we can use the metadata node for this guy and randomize the placement for each plank. So that way each plank doesn't look exactly the same. All right. Uh, you could go crazy with the amount of stuff that you can uh, parameterize or proceduralize, I should say, inside of a Houdini. Cool. All right. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, and what I want to do now is drop down a node we haven't used yet, which is the add node. And it's funny because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete stuff with this add node. <laughs> so what I want to do is I just want to be left with the points. I don't need any geometry. I just want, I just want these points. So what I'm going to do is say delete geometry, but keep the points. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to copy a tube basically onto each one of these. Okay. So let's do that. Let's create a tube really quickly. We'll go and detail all this stuff out later. I just want to get the basics uh, in place. And I do this a lot, you know, when I'm starting a, a new network, I'll just get kind of the, the template geometry roughed in. And then as I see a need for more detail, I'll go and add more detail. All right, cool. So let's take a look at this tube. So uh, to get it framed, I just hit spacebar G. And what I want to do is first, I want to turn it into a polygon. All right. Currently it's a primitive. So it's, it's kind of like a NURB surface. We want to work with polygons. Okay. Especially in the game world. And I'm going to increase the, the columns for this. All right. And then I'm going to add another node that we haven't actually started using yet. And that's the clip node. Now the clip node allows us to cut geometry based off a of plane. Okay. So what I'm going to do is feed in the tube into that clip node there. And you can see that it got rid of the bottom half there that was below the grid. Okay. And that's because this plane is set in the direction of Y. So it's pointing straight up. And if I were to select the clip node here, come into the scene view and hit enter, you can see where that plane is. All right. And we can actually rotate this around, you know, so you can see the effects of all this. And it does a nice clean cut. All right. A very useful node. I use it all the time. In this case, I just wanted to get rid of the bottom half of our nail head. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave everything at this default size. All right. I'm going to turn on end caps. So we have a, a top piece there. Very cool. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to drop down a transform node like so. All right. And we're going to use this transform node as scale. So we're going to call this the uh, nail head scale. And the reason why I don't want to uh, affect this particular scale up here is because when we do our detailing, like beveling and stuff, we want to work inside of Houdini's native size. If I were to make this really small um, at this stage in the graph here, so if I were to take this uh, range or this radius scale right here and make it really small, and then we do a poly bevel down here after this clip, um, the, the values that we use in that poly bevel are going to be really tiny. And it'll just give you carpal tunnel syndrome when you try to, um, you know, get a value of like 0 0.000123 kind of thing. <laughs> okay. So um, that's why I always, I work in the, the larger scale first and then I scale down to what it needs to be. Okay. If you're wondering. Cool. So let's go and um, we are going to copy this to all these points. So I have all these points that I created on our plank. All right. That's where our, our nail heads are going to go. It's usually a good place for those things to go. Uh, it's usually where you see them. Um, and so I'm going to drop down a copy to points node. This allows us to take some piece of geometry like this nail head here that we created. Where are you? There you are all the way over at the center of the world. And it allows us to copy it to a bunch of points that we created. All right. In this case, coming out of this add node. All right. And so I'm going to feed that into the first input and then the points into the second input. 
And there we go. We actually have four nail heads all ready to go. So now we can use this transform value here to scale it all the way down. All right. And I'm using what is called the increment ladder inside of Houdini. All right. And to do that, just hold down, hold, or put your mouse, I should say, over the uniform scale, then hold down the middle mouse button and pick a increment that you want to go up and down by and move left and right while holding the, the middle mouse button. Perfect. All right, so let's actually template our plank so we can see, you know, the relative size of all these. And that is actually looking pretty good. I'm, you know, kind of going for a little stylized look here. So I'm not really necessarily trying to get these guys looking perfectly realistic, but I want to keep realism in mind when I'm doing this type of stuff. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is change the height a little bit. And I'm doing that on the original tube node there. There we go. So now we have our nails. Cool. So all I need to do now is drop down a merge node because you know, I want to merge the geometry that's coming out of this with the geometry that's coming out of this poly extrude node. All right, so I'm just going to take my nail heads and I'm going to drop down my poly extrude there and we have our nail heads on our plank now. I know it's super basic, but for beginners, learning these techniques is crucial to being successful inside of Houdini. All right. And a lot of times, you know, when you're watching tutorials and courses and stuff, they don't necessarily, you know, laser focus on these particular techniques. All right. So that's what we're doing with these, these procedural pattern techniques, uh, videos and, and courses and stuff like that. I'm trying to laser focus on really specific techniques. And in this case, you know, it's, you know, building up stuff with, with loops and, uh, tiling meshes and stuff like that. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys there in this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to go and add a little bit more detail to all this stuff. Thanks so much.